Termites. It's night 95 and it's going to be our last night. Not forever. Just of this book. It's kind of, it's not sad because we're not stopping with books, but it's a little sad because we're done with Tanya. What I'm drinking tonight is Thor's Well. It's a devil's turn. Uh, 2015 Pinot Noir from where? Oregon. They make delicious wine. They're my favorite wines in the Northwest, and I'm not even a wino like Lou is. He knows all that, but I don't. This one's 13 bucks, and I couldn't be happier with it. Okay. So I don't need Lewis's fancy wines to make me happy, but we're almost, we are going to finish this tonight. We'll talk about that when I'm done. So she had just gone to the Holy Land because she wanted to know more about Jesus. And you guys, um, thanks for, well, I'll say that at the end. But anyway, here we go. I'm 38 now, and as I age, and as I age and my parents age, I've started looking at them a little differently too. I know I won't have them forever, and that is a frightening thought. I can't imagine life without Bo and Juanita Tucker. Thinking about their mortality considers, it causes me to consider my own. As I get closer to 40 years old, I think about the age, about age and being in my 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, too. I guess my concern is, not, is that I not grow scared as I age. I've seen people start to lose their nerve as they get old. They start to fear death so much they forget how to live, I guess. I don't think she'll forget. I don't want that to happen to me. When I think about my own future, I sometimes wonder if I'll be on the road forever. Well, yeah, with that ranch, taxes don't go away. A long time ago, I read that Mick Jagger said he didn't want to be 40 years old, still singing Satisfaction. Well, here he is, 50-something and still singing it. Update that to 70-something. I'll probably be performing Delta Dawn until I drop, too. As long as anybody wants to listen, I'll be up there singing. <clears throat> I'd hoped to be completely off the road when it came to record my next album, but that didn't happen. My dad was sneaking in dates as often as he could. <sighs> I think we all know my thoughts on that. <sighs> if the money was good, he signed the contracts. But this was to be my 30th album, and I was nervous about it. For one thing, I'd taken some time off. Few artists can do that without having an uphill battle to fight when they get back. So I knew that this album had to be as good as anything I'd ever done. I started thinking about the songs and no, and how I'd like to sing some different material, maybe stretch a bit more than I've been doing lately. My new producer, Greg Brown, agreed completely, and we did pick some edgy songs as I'd wanted and came up with some wonderful ballads. The album's title, Complicated, and I'm really proud of it. Now that the record's complete, I'm finishing up the segment of my and I'm finishing up this segment of my memoir. I say this segment because I ain't done living yet. <laughs> That's right. You never know what might happen, what I might have to write about in volume two. What's ahead? Well, I'm getting that old list-making itch again. I keep writing things down I'd like to accomplish. First of all, I'm putting together a new innovative show for my next year's tour. Because of this book, I've been sorting through old photos, listening to old songs, and hope to do a retrospective kind of concert and include a slideshow. <laughs> I guess back then that was like super innovative. I'm going to have a slideshow gonna be crazy right while I'm singing there's gonna be pictures of me behind the real me like I'm gonna be here and then right there there's gonna be a, a, hoot, a hoot to do a hootie ha and then it's gonna be pictures of my daddy and I'm gonna look at those pictures and remember I owe a lot of money because he spent it now see she wouldn't do that but I would I'd be looking and going look at that jackass <sighs> <clears throat> I'm excited about this year's tour way more than any in recent times. Maybe taking a semi break in 1996 is just what the doctor ordered because I'm feeling energized and excited about 1997. I still like to record an album with Merle, ha uh, Merle Haggard songs. I'd also li love to get together with some of my songwriting friends and write an entire album. If I could stay off the road long enough to focus on myself on it, I sincerely believe I could do what Harlan Howard suggested all those years ago. Let the song ride cider me break free. I'd give anything to make another record with Billy Sherrill, too, but it would be, take a miracle to get him back in the studio. He, re, he relishes retirement and spends most of his time on his boat. Like to put another album together for charity where artists produce the sides on each other. Dolly would pick someone to produce. Merle would pick someone or two. So I think my choice to produce might be Jerry Lee Lewis because he's truly, he's truly unique. 
Part of what a producer does is try to harness all the dynamics at a recording session and focus them in one direction. I'd love to get some great honky-tonk pickers together with Jerry Lee and try to get that explosion of musical energy pointed down the same road. We'd pay the upfront cost on the album, give everything to a charity. <coughs> While I was in the Holy Land, it struck me harder than ever before that entertainers don't really contribute much to this world. Well, I don't 100% agree. We're not curing cancers. Wait, yeah, she said don't really contribute. We're not out there curing cancer or teaching school or anything. Maybe that's why we do those charity concerts. Well, yes, it's one reason to raise money. And, you know, what else are we supposed to do? I, I, what else? We, I can't add or do science. I can't go help at NASA. <clears throat> you know, this is, you do what you do, as my niece Emily would say. Do what you do what you do. Exactly. We know we're getting paid way more than some of the people who keep making the world a little bit better, individuals like teachers and social workers and nurses. That is true. I know that music does help people through bad times, though. Fans tell me stories about songs that have touched them all the time. So to make myself feel a little more consequential in the grand scheme of things, I just might start writing music therapist down as an occupation instead of singer. Well, go right ahead. <clears throat> I wish I could end this book with a big revelation and tell you I discovered the secret of happiness. That's just not going to happen. I don't believe that life has easy or clear-cut answers. And because of that, I've been thinking about a lot about the people who make a huge personal breakthroughs that change their lives. And thinking about the ways they were different from me made me remember an incident from when I was about 15 and out on tour. The schedule was so close that I had to fly in a private plane from one venue to the next. There had been a quick storm just before we took off. And soon after we were airborne, we saw a rainbow in the sky. When we came closer and closer until finally we flew right through the rainbow. It was most, one of the most incredible experiences I've ever had. I don't mean to overstate it, but it was like being touched by God or something. Like seeing your, first, your child for the first time or watching tears fill your parents' eyes when you made them proud. And I realize it makes a great ending for a book if somebody can talk about finding the end of the rainbow. But I honestly think folks who can are far and few between. Those of us who are still works in progress should just feel lucky to get a chance to fly through one every once in a while. Well, that's probably how I would have thought that would end. You know, you don't get to change a lot. You just hope you fly through a rainbow. I mean, shit. What, do you, what else are you supposed to do? Visit the Holy Land, sing some songs, and get up, light another cig, and do the best you can. That seems to be the message. And I don't disagree. You know, not all of us are going to change the world, termites. That's why if you're sitting there thinking, I haven't done shit in COVID, don't worry. Most people haven't. I feel like we did something. We read a whole book, right? Did we learn, a, you know, did we learn a lot? We did. We, I learned a lot about country music. I have to go Google some more things. Now I have to go Google that 1994 halftime show with Winona Judd, Clint Black, somebody, and Tanya Tucker. Um, I love reading your guys' comments. I try to reply, but when it comes to my phone and then I hit reply, something weird happens, and then I have to do it from the real computer, which we all know is way too far because it's over there. About eight steps <laughs> I should just go to the YouTube channel on the thing, and then I forget because I read them all, and then I, and they're all funny for the most part. And um, <clears throat> that's it, Tara. I feel a little sad. We're done with Tanya. I haven't even go. I'll have to go see if she has another one. I don't know, but I know Loretta Lynn's coming up next. And trust me, because I did a preview on that. I didn't do a full pre-read, but I saw enough that you're gonna go. What? And she's still alive. She ain't young. She's alive. And so is her sister, Crystal Gale. And okay, termites. Um, now that this is over, because you've made it this far, the next video you will be seeing is an in-person visit in this chair and a message from the Grand Termite. He does not think he's a cult leader. He doesn't want people following him. He just wants you to know he's here. And he's soothing, and he likes to drink, 
and he, and he, he agrees that we can all just relax and do nothing during COVID. It's not a time to be an overachiever. It's a time to settle down. That's what Jesus was trying to tell us, we think. That's what he and I decided. It's calm down time. It's night night time. Just relax, enjoy it. Treat it like Christmas every day. Okay, <clears throat> termites. I'm gonna take my Pinot Noir to my bed and watch some murder on 2020. Because as you know, it calms me down knowing there's people out there getting murdered and it ain't this lady. And we will start after the grand termite visits and you get your message from him. We'll start again, so don't be sad. Celebrate. We finished it. 95 nights. And that's with a lot of bullshit on my part. A lot of sidetracking on my part. Pretty good book. She was only 38. I believe she's in her about 63 now. Maybe she wrote another one. Okay, termites. Isn't it weird? It's the last time to say it for this book. Pull up your sheet. Get your favorite pillow with your softest pillowcase. Put your head back. Close your eyes. Know that you're a worthy termite, even if you haven't done shit. In all of these days, since March 17th, even if you haven't done a damn thing, it's fine. It's fine. <sighs> There's M&Ms that have fudge brownies inside now. You should know about that. That's in my pubcast. If you want to hear more crazy things, you go to that. If you just are happy with this, I'll give you a little nugget every now and then of what's in the pubcast. I do bad foods, cheap foods, gas station foods. My favorites. Anyway, <clears throat> that's a new little thing I found at the Kroger. M&M stuffed with brownies instead of just chocolate. You think it sounds too much? It's not. It's great. And I'm a traditionalist. I don't like ruining things that are perfect, but it's an upgrade. They're just great. You could even dump them in milk. It could be even in, in, eating a cereal. All right, termites. Are you ready? You good termites? You're worthy termites. That's it. Close your eyes. Night-night termites. <laughs>